But you can't do this to me. Ladies and gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary, quite incredible, quite unlike anything you may have experienced in your life. <laughs> The Amagi is a tier 8 battleship that would have been a real thing if Japan didn't have silly relationship with mother nature. Even so, it would have ended up as a carrier anyway because of a certain treaty that were made specifically to start another war. This ship is just as old as the game itself. It's on the trailer. It has its own wallpaper. What the fuck? And you couldn't get the Yamato without going through it. You might be thinking. Why make a video about the Amagi, when everyone is familiar with it already, and you would be correct. This is a very good ship, in fact it is so good it hasn't even received a visual update to its in-game model, because nobody has any real complaints about it. It is the warship equivalent of a Toyota Camry. So why does it need a video at all? Well, because I'm currently so fed up with this game I simply gone full circle, and in my opinion, the Amagi is one of the best ship that highlights the best part of World of Warships, and also its worst, which may influence how you view this game. As always, we start with its boomsticks, you get 10 of them, one of the heaviest broadside at tier 8, at the cost of having the worst vertical dispersion. What this means, is that the shots will look more like an actual shotgun dispersion than what people think a shotgun dispersion looked like. So it's more likely to bracket a completely broadside enemy, and the worst part is he would be none the wiser. I want you to blow up the ocean! But you see this on other ships anyway, so why does it matter? Well, this small difference can have a big impact if you adjust your trigger discipline. The dispersion on the Amagi makes it slightly worse against broadsides, but slightly better against angle ships, as the shells will more likely to spread vertically, so it can screw over inferior battle cruisers. The difference is imperceptible to normal battleship dispersion, but it's worth noting. So you know exactly what to expect when you're playing the Amagi. It may even compensate slight error in aiming, or when the enemy tries to dodge them. Basically fighting RNG with RNG. But something that isn't RNG, is the armor. A very boring 32mm of plating for the entire ship. However, the Amagi comes half sunk. And unlike most other battleships, the upper superstructure is also 32mm instead of 19, leaving these much hitbox that can be reliably damaged. What's more, it has a massive torpedo bolt that covers all the way to the deck, covering the thin upper belt. This is absolute territory of the highest order, making it immune to HE, and adding another layer of dice roll against AP. To top it all off, it has a very forgiving citadel that can only be damaged from distance. This is what makes the Amagi one of the best tanking ships despite being covered with only 32mm of armor. Dare I say it tanks better than the German, because the latter prefers to put a church on their ships. That being said, it's not enough to stop SAP. Not enough to stop fire caused by higher tier ships that ignores your fire resistance, and against 460mm shells, so you want to avoid those things, unless you're fighting a paid actor. But the real weakness of the Amagi is being too boring. You focus on HE spammer, you soak damage by angling, and sail away from everything. It's the usual gameplay loop, and I'm trying my hardest not to say it on every video, because it's such a textbook thing to do in practically every battleship, ever. Yet there are still lots to learn from the Amagi. By being a jack of all trades with enough firepower to deal with higher tier ships, you can put more effort on squeezing the most out of the ship instead of worrying too much about compromises, such as big superstructure, terrible gun layout, terrible armor, and especially redundant gimmicks. If you are top tier, you want to create a strong flank by constantly pushing from the outside, putting pressure on the enemy, driving the focus away from your team, and making sure that every shot comes from the same direction. But when you are bottom tier, you want to be closer to the middle instead, creating angle to catch more broadsides. Leave the slugfest to your teammates in the flanks, as you want to preserve as much HP as possible for later part of the game.
la 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 But what if there are planes in the sky or a surprise mechanic under the sea? Well, you do the same as before, but with your stern facing the enemy, and just like that we are back to the usual gameplay of naval battle equivalent of trench warfare. However, since the Amagi has more guns on the back, you can still advance by reversing. It allows you to severely angle the ship while keeping most of the firepower, taking advantage of the random 200mm of stern plating, and most importantly allows a quick getaway when things gone south. This will make it even stronger against common ships. I mean, if you have to shoot a ship that looked like this from your perspective, you might as well shoot yourself. Yet another proof that this obsolete design from World War 1 was truly ahead of its time. Presenting the enemy with such a difficult target to shoot is the key to winning. You keep doing this until they gave up and starts shooting HE instead. So assuming you didn't become a paid actor yourself, the only thing that will ruin your day will be secondaries or G or any form of brute force stage yeah. DPM. You use ripple fire against angle ship and full salvo against broadsides. You can be at any range as long as you are shooting the right ship. But all these tactics would only help you to become a good player. If you want to become a unicum, you must have the capability to know if you can decisively do something that will win the game. Right at the moment. Like this example of me pushing top tier cruisers back to their spawn. Which happened because I managed to counter their earlier push by grinding away the battleship's HP and tanking most of the damage. Although credit would also be given to my teammates. I was also lucky enough to sit at all both of them, putting them in quite a predicament. Eventually they have nothing else to lose, so they'll turn themselves in, which is exactly where your luck runs out. It's not playing the However, my other flank isn't doing so well, so I have to make a decision on which direction I should be going next. Naturally I went for the carrier nope. and promptly missed, but no matter, as it is an easy kill, and I won't be able to save my carrier anyway. This aggressive play turns out to be the right thing to do, rewarding me with a spectacular kill, and now I have secured enough budget for my team to win the game. Not all games will be this easy, so many things has to happen correctly and it will be mostly out of your control. But the Amagi is such a dependable ship, you simply bound to have such game. And remember, if you know the rules, you are free to break it, and if you do it properly, nothing can stop you. Until then, shoot as much as possible, keep the ship angled, and always look for important ships. What else did I miss? Oh right, it has class leading torpedo protection, adding to its tankiness, but that is not an excuse to deliberately take torpedo hits. This is how you play the real battle cruiser. You take emergency repair specialist, grease the gears, basics of survivability, and emergency repair expert. Then you take fire prevention, adrenaline rush, improved repair party readiness, and your choice between demolition expert or preventative maintenance. For a less conservative build, you can replace repair party readiness for super heavy AP shells to improve damage output. And finally, if you feel adventurous, you can take long range secondary battery and close quarter combat to cosplay as German battleships. You can build it any way you like, as long as you don't take AA skills. And I don't think concealment expert is that useful either, because you wanted to be shot at, and also wanted to shoot back as much as possible. For the upgrades, you put it all on black, but if you went for gorilla build then replace aiming system with secondary battery mod 1. As for the modules, you want to get the upgraded hull first, and then propulsion. As for the range upgrade, you can skip it if you want. The Amagi is one of the best battleship from bygone era, with great armor, speed, and flexibility. But at the end of the day, this ship and the Izuna are just roadblocks for people like you. 
who grinds the tech tree to get the Yamato. It offers nothing new in terms of gameplay, which also applies to the American line, but at least they are real ships and are backed up by superior American buyers. What people really want is more gimmicks and variety. They won't admit this, but it has shaped the game. This is why we are getting increasingly specialized lines over the years, the latest and most egregious being the Japanese battlecruiser line that can't do much of anything without its special gimmick. As said before, I'm doing the Amagi, as it takes me back to simpler times, but it dawns on me that the simpler times has always been the same thing we've been doing today, just in different ships. Players who had success with the Amagi, will replicate the same shooting while retreating playstyle on other ships further exacerbating the passive gameplay you often see, which has been the root problem of why this game rarely feel enjoyable to play. But I digress, if the Amagi doesn't interest you, you probably have better ships to play, but if you wanted to know what it's like to play the game back in 2016, this is the best ship to experience that. I've played this game for 8 years so my only advice to you, is to enjoy the game as you see fit, as nothing else would surprise me at this point, unless they add missiles to the game. Anyway, rant over, now go out there and slap tier 10s with one of the best ship that nobody cares about.